How are you doing? I'm Tom with Tom River Simple Living and welcome to the 2020 Deer Season Rifle Setup Project. And it's pretty much what it sounds like. I'm going to be setting up this rifle for the 2020 deer season. All right, but here's the catch. This isn't just a normal project. This is an unfinished project. Which I, I'll explain in just a second, but like a lot of you, I'm out of work right now. My plant shut down until at least April 20th. So I suddenly have a lot of time on my hands that I wasn't expecting. And I've got a couple of new projects that I want to do during this time, but the big thing I want to do is finish up some unfinished projects just to get them done. Because, I mean, we all have unfinished projects that just kind of hang over our head a little bit. And that they add up, and after a while it gets to be stressful. Well, this channel is about simple living. We don't do stressful and simple living. That's the point of simple living. It's stress-free. All right. With that said, there's a lot of reason projects go unfinished. And it's, it's not always because of procrastination. Sometimes it's just because you don't know what to do next. And anybody that's had trouble getting a rifle to shoot accurately or ha have had accuracy problems, you know how frustrating that can be. Well, that's what I've got going on with this rifle. Well, I know a lot more now than I used to. I've, I've learned a lot of things over the years, partly just from fooling with this rifle. But it's an unfinished project. I know these things now, but I haven't applied them yet. So I, I thought a lot of y'all might just enjoy seeing me go through all the steps of setting up this rifle, except for I'm not starting at the beginning with picking a new rifle and cartridge. I'll explain later on why I chose this rifle and cartridge. Same goes for the scope. But for right now, what I'm going to do is troubleshoot this rifle. I'm going to fix the problems I'm having with the accuracy. All right. And let me explain the, the first problem. I've got two problems here that I'm, I'm fixing to fix. The first problem is I could go to the range with this rifle, brand new, out of the box. I could fire two shots and they would touch each other. My third and fourth shot were always flyers. My, my groups would really start opening up. And there was no rhyme or reason to where the, why the shots were flyers. Well, I talked to a lot of knowledgeable people. And let me say, this particular rifle is a Winchester Model 70 Featherweight Super Grade. Right, so it's a pretty rare rifle, and it's in 7 miles. The stock's a super grade stock, but the barrel's a featherweight barrel, so that means it's a really thin barrel. And I heard a lot of different things from a lot of different, very knowledgeable people on why my shot groups were opening up. The biggest thing I heard was that just featherweight barrels, after they get warm, are not very accurate. Well, I don't believe that. All right, now, at way back in the day, that that was true. All right, you, you go back enough years, and I'm not even sure when. We're going to say from the 70s back, maybe 60s. Thin barrels then had more stress in them. All the barrels had more stress in them. Well, the way you relieve stress in steel is heat treating. Well, they didn't have the heat treating technology that we have now. All right, so all of your more recent rifles, this one's made in 2013, so it's, it's starting to get a couple years on it, but um, all of your 2000s, you know, and later rifles, they understand heat treat much better. We've had technology now that they just didn't have back in the day. These barrels don't have the stress in them they used to. 
So I'm I'm convinced it's, it's not heating up and it's just a featherweight barrel and shots going everywhere. Well, the obvious thing to a lot of experienced shooters is that, all right, this barrel is supposed to be free floated. Well, just because the barrel's free floated doesn't mean it's free floated. All right, dollar bill. Famous way us hunters check barrels to see if they're free floated. All right, it's free floated. Dollar bill's going all the way down. It's not touching wood. But here's the problem I, I did not realize at the time. All right, right now I got three dollar bill widths. I've got one regular bill, one folded. All right, now we're hitting. Right in here. Right in this area here. The gap's not very wide between the wood and the barrel. So what was happening, my, my first two shots, the barrel wasn't touching wood. It was free floated. The shots were touching each other. My third and fourth shots, all of a sudden I got flyers and anything after that. Well, what was happening is the barrel was expanding. It wasn't touching wood before, but then all of a sudden it was touching wood. I have another issue I'll get into in a moment that's due to this being a wooden stock. But this issue with the being too close, not enough gap between the stock and the barrel, I've seen this with high-end synthetic stocks. So this is a, a really common problem, you know, some of y'all need to keep an eye out for. All right, which brings me to the second issue I'm having now. All right, th this stock has highly figured wood in it. It's more prone to movement, warping, and so forth. Well, the stock's actually moved on me a little bit, and now the receiver is actually binding in here. Winchester bedded the stock at the factory, and so it's, it's bedded. It's not moving because of the bedding. But now this action does not want to come out of the wood. When I first got this rifle, it wasn't a problem. It would come right out of the stock just like it's supposed to. Now it's not. All right. And it's actually created a wear mark on the receiver. So what, what I'm fixing to do now, I'm fixing to tear this rifle down. I'm going to knock down the high spot over here in the stock. I'm going to knock off the high spot here in the barrel channel and we're going to put it back together and hopefully this gun's going to be good to go and we're going to find out tomorrow because I'm going to work up some new loads for it. Alright, so let's strip this thing down. Right, let's get the scope off of here. Might as well go ahead and take the bolt out as well and get it out of the way. Now let's pull these action screws. All right, folks, and here's the problem. All right, at this point, the action should easily come out of the stock. There's nothing easy about this. And that's how I know I've got an issue with this wood moving on the receiver. So, this is kind of, this is fixing to get a little ugly. It's going to take a lot more force than I would like to get it out.
and there we go. That action is out of there. And you can barely make out a spot right here where the wood's actually rubbing on the receiver. All right, so I want to relieve some of the wood in the stock right in this area and hopefully get rid of that stress. And I can actually just make out an impression here in the wood where it's catching. I've got my old trusty 5 8 wooden dial here. And I want to be really careful with this. We have made progress, but it's still not seating as easy as it should. And it's because of the fit right in here. So, and that makes sense. If we're binding on this side, then also, you know, we've got pressure over here. It's, that makes sense. So I'm going to take just a little bit off it in this area if you look closely right in here you can also see where the metals pressing on the wood here still got to take a little off the the barrel channel It's going to be right about here. I'm probably going to take a little more than I need, but I don't want to go back in here after I'm done. Some mineral spirits. I don't want to leave any sawdust in here. Sawdust attracts moisture. We don't want any moisture building up in this. So let's get down in these little nooks and crannies in here and get all of the sawdust out. And you can see the factory bedding in here. They did a really great job. It's, it's such a tight fit that even the serial number shows up from the receiver. Same way on this end. They've got just enough bedding here to secure the action in place. Well, now that it's dried, I can take a little men wax, go over the inside, the places I sanded, and seal it back up. You don't have to use men wax. You can use any kind of stain that seals wood. Because that's all I'm after is I want to seal the wood in here so that it doesn't absorb moisture and get any more movement or anything like that. And luckily, I, I kept everything on the inside so I don't have to worry about trying to match up colors or anything like that. I can get a little bit on the edges while doing this, and that's okay too, because I'm just going to wipe it right off. Get any excess out. And while that's drying, I want to go ahead and wipe down the underside of the barrel and the action. And this is just a cloth I used to wipe my, my guns down with. It, it's got some oil on it, but it's... I'm not trying to cover this in oil. Oil and wood do not mix. All right. So I'm just trying to wipe down where I've touched it under here to make sure I didn't you know, get any drops of sweat or anything like that in here that could cause any rust. And now for a second and final coat of men wax here. Alright, we're ready to put it back together now. There we go. 
it's not falling out of here. It doesn't just pull out, but that's because the action is bedded. So it's a really tight fit with that recoil lug. But if I rock it, I can work it out. And I can get it out by hand. I don't need a mallet. There we go. All right. I, that's good. That's, that's not a problem. The problem was when it, I was having to beat it out. Now, bottom metal. And that's it. Alright, so let's check it with the dollar bill now and see what we have. Alright, two dollar bills. One folded in half. Let's see what we got. Perfect. Just out of curiosity. Alright, so that, that gave me the thickness of three bills, which comes out, according to my calipers, 12 and a half thousandths. Let's see if about four. All right. And now it's starting to hit right in here with four bills. That's 15 thousandths. <clears throat> so in between Twelve and a half, fifteen thousandths. That should be perfect. Well, she's back together, and this rifle should be ready to go. And I'll be honest, I, I can't wait to go try it out. Kind of embarrassed it took me this long to to get it fixed, but it took me a while to figure out what was going on with it. And it's it just comes down to I had clearance on the barrel, but it just wasn't enough. And when it heated up by that third shot, it was getting off. And that problem confused a lot of really knowledgeable people that I talked to about this. Well, hey, that's, that's just one of the things you learn with time, time and experience. All right, folks, if this helps you out in any way, please hit the thumbs up. It helps out the channel. If you want to see any future videos, please hit the subscribe button. And the next video is going to be on picking a bullet. And then we're going to the range with it. Hey, I, I can't wait to see what it does. I, I'm serious. I'm just really excited about this. And I hate it took me so long to, you know, to get it right. But I had some things to learn before I could, before I knew what to do. I think we got it now. And in the next video, we're going to find out. God bless, and y'all have a good day.